Good afternoon, it's Tony Hayes again, Paranormal Investigation UK. Today's the 18th of 2nd, 2022, uh, Friday afternoon. And we're now looking at movie 390. This is, um, there are four elements to this. Um, one I, I do often, quite often do, if it's a one-off coming in, I capture CCTV and I know for certain it's a, it's a light anomaly or I can explain the noise. They tend to go in a, in a folder called uh, negative. Now, um, I deal with these all the week um, once I realise it's definitely got a rational explanation into the negative folder they go. So I had a quick look through there. There's 175 of those that I've looked at and it may well be it will become 176 when we actually look at this one here. So we've not done one of these for a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this for you. There's two aspects for this. One is obviously the visual. The other one is the audible. So as normal with the Chester case, I'm using amplified headphones so and they're over here. So I don't actually miss anything. If you're on laptop speakers or mobile smartphones, not quite as efficient. Um, earbuds are better, but you're far better when you're analysing. Use over over ear headphones. So I start this up. This is on the 9th of September, 2021. It's just coming up to four o'clock in the morning. And well, what I remember, I had a quick look at it earlier. There's a light anomaly that comes down. That's and because of the amount of strange light anomalies we've had in this particular building. I'm taking a little bit more care than what I normally would do. There it goes. Very quick. I, I think that's just falling debris. Um, but we, what we will do now, we will have a listen all the way through. To make absolutely certain there's nothing else to be seen or heard. Okay. What I'll do. Nothing to be seen or heard, uh, except with the exception of that streaking light. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to open that in Movie Maker, give that a chance just to configure it. I only know me with a minute. Maybe I'll take a couple of seconds to to do that. Okay. There we go. Let's go find it. It is traveling quite quickly. Um, it's traveling quickly. Okay. Uh, Get a bit more of that. Okay. Let's see maybe a bit. Um, what I tend to do is do one at normal speed, and then the second one at faster speed. All you've got to do is click on video tools. So slow speed, it expands there. Just move the, the fader down till you find the light anomaly which is there. Drag it back a little bit. Do the same again. Split and remove sections so you, you're not looking at nothing. That's it. 
that's what I get rid of. Because in uh, normal circumstances, what I'll actually do is I have a folder called Dust, Insects and, and Light Anomalies. I put them all in there and periodically I'll, put, I'll do a movie, put them all onto a movie for YouTube. And people can have a look through that we're dealing with vast amounts of um, captures in Chester, possibly well over 1,500 now um, so have been involved in it. So with that amount, um, we've become quite astute when it comes to dust and insects, airborne particles, light anomalies, whatever you want to call them. Although we have had some strange stuff, which, as you've seen, those that follow the case will know how I handle them. But in this case, I'm pretty confident what we're dealing with here is some sort of um, dust fall. Uh, and what actually happens, it's travelling so quickly, the camera frame rate is only 30 frames per second, so for every second there's 30 frames. That sounds fast, but it isn't in reality. Uh, so something that gets uh, passes the camera, if it's a piece of like dust, for example, because of, of the speed it's travelling, it suddenly looks, starts to look like a tube shape, which is there. Now it's slowing down. There. Travelling so fast, <clears throat> you have a typical tube shape. That like that. And I can see that that's two frames. It's travelled that quick that distance. <clears throat> within two frames and it's 30 frames per second that shows you the speed that it have travelled so unquestionably that is dust or some sort of falling um, debris so what I will do is because I've saved these to put on um, YouTube later uh, I'll, just, I'll, I'll pop that in a folder and save that file it's useful anyway is a learning learning one and if need be um, I'll actually take um, a screenshot of that and this is to help people when they're reading the reports because they won't necessarily watch the videos they'll read the report they will begin to see that the amount of effort it is going into to prove this case um, and to investigate it. So that's that one done. Don't need to save that. So that file <coughs> that will go in the uh, I've already put it into the negative file mainly because I'd already de predetermined before I did this, this review that's what it was about um, right so the next three are all down to these trigger object things these balls that are in the um, window ledge on camera which is, let's get this right so, you, know, you know where I'm coming with from here yeah that there, cam camera 2 and camera 2B, the one that sat on the actual window shelf. Um, so, this is it, I am deeply suspicious with these. They don't appear to be moving. Um, just come on. And yeah, weeks go by and he doesn't do anything. Then suddenly, for some reason, we'll have two or three of them that will um, flash. But really, in principle, they should not only come on to it turn on the light when the ball is moved or vibrated. 
Um, so they seem to be, you know, culprits of false alarming. Okay, that goes up a second time. Okay, that's off. We do switch the, the balls round. Um, I think it's, it might be a dozen of these balls I'm getting about. Um, but it only seems to be on the window, on this window ledge. It tends to flash. Then we change the balls around and it's, it's only still that one. You'd expect it. So, for example, if we had one on the a filing cabinet, you moved it, to exchange it to one of the window lights. If it's a problem ball, it would go off on the uh, the filing cabinet, but it doesn't. And that is why I, I continue to um, record these. Um, okay, this is the last one now. It goes off. I can't hear anything. Yeah, this is the last one. So when if this finishes, nothing else happens. What I'll do is I'll I will record these events. Um because that's what your job is. Um I think the difficulty with it when you look at this sort of stuff, you can never be a hundred percent certain. Ninety nine point nine percent. Um still isn't a hundred there was that element of doubt so it's total i'm a great believer in full disclosure if, if something's happened uh irrespective some of them are so obvious that I, I can just yeah that's definitely such as that dust one that we did earlier that's certainly some sort of airborne particle it's fell uh, that'll, that'll go into the negative file and I've just taken a copy for my own purpose. As far as the other three are concerned, I, you know, I, I can't be 100% certain it isn't something strange going on, mainly because it's all generally happens to be to this window, irrespective of which balls we put there. So I will record them down, uh, and it may become important at some point in the future. I simply don't know. So, uh, right, so that's a quick one on the uh, movie 390. See you on the next one. Bye.